Yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. How y'all doing? Howdy, kids. I'm Q, the Costa Rican, and today we're back again with another little discussion video. This time around, we're talking about the future Paradox Pokemon, more specifically, their competitive viability in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet ranked 3v3s. Yes, sir. Talking about singles, not talking about doubles. So, you know, if you're looking for some doubles intel, this is probably not uh, the video for you, but I'm sure... Uh, some of these apply on both uh, platforms because, you know, these Pokemon are just that pretty much uh, easy to use. But regardless, let's get into one of my favorite. We're talking about the homie Iron Valiant. Yes, sir. This Pokemon is a Gardevoir X Gallade crossover. A little, little collab they did. And uh, here it is. You know what I mean? Very strong Pokemon. Base 130 attack, base 120 special attack, and pretty good speed on top of all that. You can run this mixed, you can run it uh, choice specs, you can run a choice scarf, you can run it with a booster energy, you can run it with a uh, life orb, like I said, with mixed sets. I think this Pokemon is going to be, I know I said in the other video that Fluttermane was going to be widely used across any team. This is definitely a next, a second best, if not even, sometimes might even be better because it probably can tank a little bit more hits than a Fluttermane can um, on either side. But regardless... It is still a glass cannon. That's what's meant. That's what it's meant to do. It's meant to just click buttons. I have been getting into casual battles with this Pokemon and just clicking Specs Moon Blast and not thinking twice. It's kind of insane. It's kind of brain dead, and it's uh, it's gonna be running rampant around uh, once three v threes start up start. It's gonna be running rampant. It's gonna be crazy. Don't be surprised if you see this on every team. Up next, we got the homie Iron Hands. A little bit more of a defensive option, but also super duper strong on the uh, offensive option as well. Uh, I've been liking, I've been really liking Assault Vest uh, with uh, Iron Hand, just so you can tank a few extra hits with that insanely high base HP stat. Uh, you invest into that, and you're just going to have an insane amount of HP, and then Assault Vest on top of that, boom. Now you're tanking special hits that you probably wouldn't have been able to tank. Will this guy run Terra Steel or Fire, or probably just a bulky Water Terra? It probably will. I could see Terra Steel mainly to be able to win the exchange with Fluttermane, or even Terra Normal, I suppose, if you want to resist the Ghost move, but more than likely... Attempting to build around resisting the fairy stab because there's going to be a lot of we're adding two very strong fairies to the uh, two Maybe it's just two. Maybe there's more we're adding. Well, I guess I don't really count screen tail But yeah, you're adding, we're adding two very strong fairy types to the meta once series two comes out. So uh, It's it's it, the, the, the steel terrors are going to be prevalent and they're going to be around and also Just getting your steel terror on any of the iron Pokemon is also just very fitting because I feel like Some of them should have at least been steel type. I'm not talking about you iron treads, but regardless uh, this Pokemon is going to be insanely hard to deal with, Iron Hands. I think it's actually going to be probably, like, top three in usage in terms of, like, overall Pokemon. I could definitely see this Mon being built to, like, live very specific hits. Maybe even be Air Balloon. Maybe be Terra Flying for the ground types or something of that nature. It also, for some reason, gets Swords Dance and Belly Drum, which is kind of insane. So, if you watched the last video and you, like, want to Omni Boost with your Scream Tail into Iron Hands, it's fucking over, bro. It's over. It's going to be it's gonna be crazy. Um, but, yeah, that's... uh. That's Iron Hands. I really do see this Pokemon putting in a lot of work once the ranked 3v3 Series 2 drops. And that is going to be very soon, guys. I think I think at the time of this going up, there's going to be like a day break. And then the next day after that, boom, Series 2. Don't quote me on this, though. I might be wrong. I, I genuinely don't know. I'm kinda, I kind of sometimes just talk and, without fact-checking myself. And uh, But then I'll let the comment section tell me, you know, if I'm wrong or not. Regardless, up next, we have another Pokemon that is super duper good. And I, I do have these slightly ranked in terms of my, like, you know, favorite to least favorite. Not to say that any of them are bad, in my opinion. But I ended up putting Iron Bundle here at the three spot. Only because he's his worst enemy. He's his, what's the word? What's the phrase? He's his biggest enemy? Something like that. He can miss Hydro Pump is what I'm trying to get at. And that's literally the only thing holding him back. If my man could just always land his Hydro Pumps... If, you, if there's an avid gravity user in the chat, you know what I'm saying? Maybe we could pair him with Iron Bundle. But yeah, super duper fast. Hits really hard on the special side. Has flip turn. One of the only two Pokemon in the game to get flip turn. So that's going to be really good for pivoting like into a yawn spammer. And then get to be able to get out while also simultaneously dealing damage. Once again, he is a uh, Paradox Mon. So booster energy is kind of just like a guaranteed like, oh, you want to don't know what item to put on it? Put on a booster energy. Specs or Scarf. Pretty similar to Iron Valiant, except for he's just a little less reliable, only because he can miss one of his uh, strong water stabs. So, there is that. But, regardless, I've been having a lot of fun running him with, uh, what's, what's his name? Obama Snow, to be able to get up Snow. Could even see him being ran with Slow King, the better Snow Setter. <laughs> to be able to get up Snow, and uh, then you can just fire off, like, Specs Blizzards that can't miss, which is kind of insane. I'm curious to see how much Specs Blizzards does to, like, 
some of these fire types in the meta that's going to be running around. But yeah, this is going to be a really good Pokemon. Uh, one thing that I, people have been pointing out that I uh, already noticed as well when I was thinking about counters to set Iron Bundle sets, Terra Fire Gastron is going to be a bit of a problem to deal with this. Be a, be a bit of a problem for Bundle to deal with. So that's why we're recommending a little bit of Terra Ground usage. Uh, which, you know, it only becomes good once they Terrify, but obviously if they don't Terrify, then you have Freeze Dry, which is four times super effective, so they almost always have to Terra in front of the bundle if they want to live, unless they know your choice locked into, uh, into a water move, but also, you know, Boots and Life Orb is just as viable on the homie, so take that as you will, that's Iron Bundle, he's uh, just, the top three are kind of brain dead mods, you just do whatever you want with them and they're gonna do something well. Uh, up next, another good Pokemon, we have Paradox Volcarona, the future form. This Pokemon uh, is one of the only ones that gets a guarantee, not one of the only ones, but one of the like fast ones that guarantee gets a Spatak raise with boost energy versus your speed, be unless you want to, you know, do some fancy like Kartana creeps and stuff like that. I say Kartana creeps because uh, if you guys don't know back, what, what was it, Gen 6, back in Generation 6, you could get your you could get speed boost Kartana versus you know attack boosting beast boost Kartana if you uh, ran timid nature with like 11 IVs or something into attack which is a little silly but I digress uh, I don't think you have to do all that with this I'm pretty sure you could just get away with like running max speed and like very little special attack investment and still be able to get the booster energy speed but you probably don't even want to do that because it gets agility so agility with booster energy is kind of like a baby quiver dance. You know, it doesn't get Quiver Dance for whatever reason, but it's still really good. Gets access to U-Turn, so once again, pivoting going to be very pivotal <laughs> in this meta. Shut up. Um, <laughs> it's going to be very pivotal in this meta. Um, but also, you can just slap on some choice specs. Uh, I think that um, a good coverage move on this Pokemon that's going to be widely used is Dazzling Gleam. So you might not be able... It's going to have a very strong case of like 7 move slot syndrome because it gets insane amounts of coverage. So it's pretty much going to come down to... What is your team weak against? What can what does my team have like trouble trying to uh, knock out? If your team just doesn't have uh, more than like one Roaring Moon Oko move on it, you might want to have to run Dazzling Gleam on the homie, and then uh, Terra Grass in front of Set Earthquake and uh, fire off the Dazzling Gleam. But this Pokemon hits insanely hard uh, without needing to Quiver Dance, so not really missing Quiver Dance all that much. But it definitely would make it a little better if it uh, if it if it had still had Quiver Dance. Okay, and up next we have the homie Iron Treads. The thing about all these future Paradox Pokemon is that they're all, in my opinion, they're better in terms of competitive viability. They're a lot better than some of the, like, quote-unquote lower tier uh, past Paradox forms. Because Iron Treads is all the way down here at number 5. But he is still insanely good. 106 speed. And look at that attack and look at that defense. If you're not, like, if you're just investing into, like, his highest attack, obviously, er, to his highest stat... Obviously, the booster energy is going to boost your defense, but most people are going to be running timid max speed um, and attack so that they can boost their speed. Or you can run adamant and then just rely on your rapid spin to boost your speed because that's a thing. Rapid spin gives you a plus one speed boost. This is also going to be, once again, another really good counter to um, some hazard stacking leads. You can rock out with the air balloon so that you can guarantee uh, spin hazards away in front of Glim Glim because they can't Oko you with any other move besides Earth Power and they can't hit you with the Earth Power if you got the Balloon. And the good thing about the little interaction with um, Toxic Debris and Rapid Spinning is if is even if you Rapid Spin, it shows the animation of the Toxic Debris coming out and still going on the field. But trust me when I tell you, it does go away. So some some uh, interactions I foresee is Iron Treads Earthquaking the the uh, Glamora, them getting up T-Spikes and Stealth Rocks all in one turn, and then breaking it down to Sash, you get a, you Rapid Spin on the following turn, get rid of all the hazards, the Glamora is null and void. Definitely, get, a lot of people are going to have to adapt to that and not ha and not run, uh, either run, I guess, Ghost Terra Glamora, or just not run Glamora. Could we please do the latter and not run Glamora? That'd be great. Another fun set on this Pokemon could be Iron Defense Body Press, because you can get to plus six Iron Defense, and still get the booster energy boost to your defense on top of that, making body press just that much stronger, which would be kind of crazy. Don't really foresee that one being widely used all that much, but it is still a very fun, like, I guess it could, I guess you consider it fun. It could be a very fun, like, um, not stally, but like, like wall-ish, like, like, let's say the, the, the guy you see on the opposing side, nothing but physical attackers, iron defense body press, you know what I'm saying? It, it could, it could fuck around and, uh, just be a really good set, but I think more so, more often than not, it's going to be either... Booster Energy Rapid Spin to try and sweep, or just a Hazard Control lead to uh, oppose the Gamora and or the Guard Chomps and stuff like that running around. 
Up next, we have the homie Iron Jugulus. Now, this is where we kind of get into the, like, uh, are we really using this Pokemon? Probably not. It is a wannabe Hydreigon. I do believe it hits a little harder than Hydreigon. I kind of want to fact check myself on that before I just start talking out my ass. It does not. It hits slightly weaker. Just slightly. Not that much slightly, but just slightly weaker than Hydreigon um, on the special side. Doesn't have its physical prowess that uh, Hydreigon has, so you pretty much always know what this Pokemon's going to do. It's either going to be Boots, or it's going to be Specs, or it's going to be Scarf, but it's always going to be hitting you with special moves. Regardless, uh, it is a little bit faster than Hydreigon, so it has a pretty decent speed tier. Uh, Terra Flying Specs Hurricanes, if you land them, by the way, could probably be pretty good. Uh, maybe, you know, a Rain Team actually wouldn't be bad with Iron Jugglers, now that I'm thinking about it out loud. Seems like, uh, seems like it could, pretty, could be pretty viable. Once again, Terra Steel, always a good option on any Pokemon in this series to meta. Thanks, Fluttermane and Iron Valiant. So, yeah, could definitely see um, Jugglers doing things. I don't know if it gets any niche moves. Let me know in the comment section down below if you know any, like, very niche. I think it gets Hyper Voice. So you could be like Throat Spray Hyper Voice, I guess, if you already have a Boost Energy user, a better Boost Energy user, which, let's be honest, guys, you're probably going to have a better Boost Energy option on the team than Iron Jet is. But regardless, it's still there. Dark Flying, you know what I mean? It's it's pretty good. I It's 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 not like absolutely terrible, but I think in terms of the least, you, I feel like Screamtail will be used more than this Pokemon. But who knows? Maybe somebody will find some crazy niche set out there and uh, it'll actually be able to pop off. But uh Pretty much, ab other than that, it's, that's just the standard stuff. And then, last but not least, we have the homie Iron Thorns, a.k.a. Futuristic Titar. My guy here hits pretty hard, but he is also really slow. And this guy also gets a very niche Kartana effect. Um, if you run Jolly uh, Max Speed with, I don't, I think it's, I can't remember what it was. I think it's Jolly Max Speed, no attack, obviously. And then what, what do you need? Like, like another? Yeah, bro. You need zero. Wait, you need zero. You need timid. You need timid. Okay, you can you can run some. You can run a little bit of attack. But yeah, it's pretty much got the Kartana effect. This would be the one. I don't know if you would do that, though. Um, it could get a speed boost with the booster energy and then SD instead of Dragon Dance. It gets SD, right? I'm not lying again. It does get SD. Okay, so I'm not lying. I figured, I, I feel like I, I, I've seen this set before. Once again, shout out to the homie Lucas who uh, used a uh, bit of a Kartana-esque Iron Thorn set once. I don't know if it actually popped off or not, but regardless. It does get access to some multi-hit moves in Rock Blast. I think it even gets Pin Missile. It does. It even gets Pin Missile. So, hey, a load of dice. This could be the next Bax Caliber. Who knows? Assault Vest Tank is also a very viable option with base 100 HP. Going to be living a pretty decent amount of hits. Uh, Rock Electric is a bit is a little bit of a weird typing, but once again, you could always Terra Flying to avoid those pesky earthquakes. You can Terra Bug for whatever reason. I don't know why that's there. You can Terra Bug for whatever reason. Air Balloon to already be immune to the set uh set um set ground moves, and then get up your Stealth Rocks and or Spikes. So it could also be a Hazard Stacking lead with just max HP and trying to tank some things off. But uh, Rock and Electric Stab seems to be pretty good opposing flying types are not going to want to show up to the battle you know what i'm saying and uh once again take all these uh considerations with a grain of salt one i'm 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 no expert when it comes to competitive pokemon especially in 3v3s but i do know how, how to have a good time and how to knock some pokemon out and that's exactly what we're trying to recommend with all these sets but with that being said that is going to be our little a bit of a quicker discussion on uh the uh, future paradox pokemon if you all like me saw and you saw what you like, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. We will be going live on opening night. Yes, sir, you heard it here first. We will be going live on opening night with, uh, with um, you know, Rank Series 2, 3v3. So stay tuned for that. And with that being said, I'm going to get up out of here. Let me know in the comment section down below what Pokemon you're most hyped to use that are future Paradox. Give me some team comps you guys want to see. Maybe even leave a PokePace or two in the comment section. I don't judge. Let me see what you guys are rocking with. I'm trying. I, I need ideas, you know what I'm saying? With that being said, now we'll do the outro. If you all like what you saw and you saw what you like, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.